Hey, back for another episode. This is Dwayne Clark. This is episode 162. Today we have Mark Willis on the show. Hello and welcome to the Wealth of Real Estate Investing Show. This is your host, Dwayne Clark. And today we have Mark Willis. Mark is a certified financial planner, a two-time number one best-selling author and owner of Lake Growth Financial Services, a financial firm in Chicago, Illinois. Mark, thank you so much for joining us on the show. And how you doing, my friend? Hey, doing great, Dwayne. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I really appreciate it. It's it's never never a bad time to have a person with financial expertise to kind of talk about. We're always talking about ways to um, you know better ourselves financially and build our build our wealth. Um, but just for people who are not familiar with you, I know that you have a pretty strong um, platform on social media, YouTube. You're putting out a lot of information, and you're very well known in the financial services industry. But for our audience, would you mind going through your background and uh, how'd you get started in the financial industry? Well, I'm definitely not your average financial planner. That's, that's for sure. Uh, I started in a totally different side of the uh, career universe, but stumbled into finance when I found that, you know, these student loan companies actually wanted their money back. Go figure. And we had a, we had $120,000 to pay off in the midst of the Great Recession. And honestly, it sounds quite a lot like what we're going through right now at the tail end, hopefully prayerfully of this coronavirus um, as vaccines are hopefully becoming more available for folks and we can see a recovery for folks. It's a very interesting time because we've had a lot of people go through a terrible year and other people a very incredibly good year uh, as of 2020. But as of my background anyway, we, we've struggled through the Great Recession, but we pushed through it with uh, ingenuity and just elbow grease, I guess found finance as we were getting clear on our own financial goals. My wife and I had to figure out what we wanted our money to do for us and determined that 401ks were not the knight in shining armor that uh, maybe some people might have expected they would be. Uh, certainly us as, um, as we had never really thought beyond the W-2 job. Uh, so we stumbled across some not so average financial strategies and became uh, so enamored with them that we you know, set up shop as it were, we began to share with our um, clients that these are potential ways to build real wealth outside of Wall Street and uh, to develop a passive income streams that you could never outlive. So that's sort of our background, our journey. Uh, and eventually we were able to even become our own source of financing to pay, not just pay off our debt, to buy it back and become the banker for ourselves, which is one of the strategies we specialize in. Awesome. Yeah, we're definitely gonna be touching on that. I know that you kind of cover array of different topics and expertise. Um, but one of the things I wanted to kind of touch on, because I know we can probably talk about that for hours, is uh, as we head into 2021, I know we had a kind of really rough year. People are kind of worried about the future uh, regarding the stock market and just kind of overall, like they're hitting their financial goals. Um, but from like a high level overview, can you kind of touch on where you see kind of stock market in 2021, as well as kind of like some of the financial outlook that you're seeing on your end that you're talking with clients? Well, it's, um, it's certainly, again, a divergent economy. Uh, the stock market has never been higher. And yet we've had more people unemployed this year than at any point throughout our nation's history. We are deeper in debt as a country than we've ever been uh, in terms of nominal dollars, but approaching even World War II uh, amounts of debt to GDP which is frightening. And we just passed another $900 billion of uh, debt onto our grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Now there's some earnest need for that money to get into the hands of people, but that in my opinion is not the solution. Uh, that's not the solution to the problem. The, the problem was we were sick before the pandemic swept across our land. And I'm talking financially unhealthy, of course, uh, and my prayers and heart and thoughts go to anybody who's been medically impacted or financially impacted by this virus. And yes, we need to help. But man, um, the, the I, I was reading a statistic as of the beginning of 2020, before coronavirus was even a word on our vocabulary, the average American, 60% actually, didn't have $400 in their pocket to cover an expense. According to the Federal Reserve, average American, over 60% of us would have had to sell something or go into debt just to come up with a $400 emergency cash fund. That to me is not financially healthy. You know, when we look back on our grandparents in the 1940s, the average savings rate was closer to 30% of their income, 30% 
of their income saved versus pre-pandemic, our savings rate was closer to 5%. Wow. And our debt level flip-flopped as well. We also went from about 11% of our income on debts, very low mortgages, certainly no car payment back then. Credit cards weren't even a thing back then to now 36 cents on the dollar. 36% of our income now goes to service debt on the average. So if anyone listening is better than 36% of your income, that means someone is that much worse to make it an average. So we were very financially unhealthy and there's some, we found some strategies, I believe, that make us financially resilient and you can even antivirus your money uh, with some of the strategies we help our clients implement to become financially immune and to build some pandemic proof into your portfolio. Mm. Yeah, let's definitely dig, dig into that. As far as kind of what you, your kind of overall look as we dig into some kind of uh, anti-virusing your, your port financial portfolio, uh, can you kind of talk about what's kind of the, uh, what is an ideal attribute of an investment portfolio should look like? Um, does it involve like uh, real estate? Does it involve um, other different types of strategy? Can you kind of give us kind of overall thoughts on that? Well, I'd say, yeah, the, the, the general notion is we've got it all backwards. Again, if average is being in debt up to your eyeballs and having most of your net worth tied up in your home drywall and a illiquid 401k, then I don't want to be average. You know, if that's the average, then I don't want to be average. Uh, typically, we sort of imagine for a moment a financial plan, almost like an upside down or inverted pyramid. We've got a couple hundred bucks in our savings account or cash accounts, and then everything else is tied up in the drywall of our house through home equity or a 401k or other paper assets, things that we cannot access, control, or manage, and typically something that will be taxed in the future. For example, a 401k is a tax-deferred financial vehicle. Now, a lot of people like that sound, tax-deferred. That sounds so nice until we think about it in terms of visiting the dentist. How, how good an idea is it to defer a root canal? You know, that's not a good idea most of the time. And taxes and root canals kind of go hand in hand, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And if we think taxes might even possibly be a little higher in the future, according to most economists, they would say, some would even say that tax rates are going to have to double in our future, then it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to put off something that's just going to get worse over time. So, you know, when it comes to a correct allocation to a portfolio, you know, we meet, we meet with folks on a one-on-one -on -one advisory role, Dwayne. Uh, so I certainly couldn't give folks a particular financial plan over a podcast like this. But in principle, what I notice is that too often we don't have enough money set aside for the emergency or the opportunity. What if you could have as much as two years of your expenses set aside, not just for emergencies, but also for the, the quick dry powder cash available needed for those big deals that you'd like to take down and add to your portfolio. There's a strategy out there. Uh, Nassim Taleb made it popular. He, he wrote The Black Swan and some other books, the Anti-Fragile book. Uh, he has a strategy that's pretty popular out there called the Barbell Strategy. And this is where you have a big portion of your money in liquid conservative cash and cash equivalents in your, in your portfolio. And then you take bets on speculative assets. So the more you've got over here on one side of the barbell, the more you're able to take really important and really powerful bets on companies that you might invest in, businesses, real estate. Just had a guy this morning email me, say he's going to put an offer in to buy and invest in a business that could yield him several hundred percent yield plus a salary uh, as the owner of that business. So that's a pretty cool deal. He only could do that if he had lots of liquid cash on his balance sheet. So too often, I feel like diversification is kind of the name of the average financial planner game. Mm. But let's think about that for just a minute. What does diversification really mean? Well, Warren Buffett calls diversification insurance against ignorance. Okay, insurance mm. against ignorance. Now, if I have a handful of of, uh, of eggs and I put them in 12 different baskets, let's say. So I put all my eggs in 12 different baskets and I'm feeling pretty good that I've mixed up and, and buried my diversified portfolio on these 12 different baskets. But all of those 12 baskets, let's say, are on the same truck. And that truck, unfortunately, goes over a cliff. Now, Dwayne, how important was that diversification? Doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Yeah, doesn't mean anything. Once that truck's over that cliff, doesn't matter. So take some of the eggs, put it off the truck. And the, the fancy word here, the $2 cocktail word here is uh, non-correlated assets. 
So anytime you can get some non-correlated assets, things that don't impact or even react when, when a market takes a tumble or goes over a cliff, that's when you can not only survive, but even thrive. That's where you can not just be resilient, but as Nassim Taleb says, that's where you can be anti-fragile. That's where you can actually thrive in the midst of chaos, where you can take advantage of opportunities in the midst of the downturn. And is that uh, uh, connected, Rich, to my next question? Is that uh, the self-banking strategy or is that just kind of something separate there? I just wanted to kind of clarify for people that might be confused there. Well, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So if you think about it, banking is a function that we all participate in. Even if you don't necessarily have the business card banker as your career, you're in the banking business. Uh, make, make no mistake. You know, we're already in the banking business. Here's what I mean. We always fly an airplane through an environment. So imagine for a minute, you've got an airplane and Dwayne, I'll tell you a very quick story. Then I'll get back to my metaphor. Uh, I had the privilege of with a buddy of mine who was getting his pilot's license to fly in an, a little prop plane with him. So it was a prop plane that we got to fly around Chicago. In fact, we flew over Lake Michigan right next to the big buildings downtown. It was so cool. So cool. But, uh, you know, we got to fly over these uh, buildings. He handed me the controls as we're flying past the downtown downtown district of, uh, of Chicago, downtown Loop. And it really struck me that I was able to do that without any real background check or whatever. I won't tell the guy's name just for his safety, but uh, <laughs> that was an amazing experience. Now, back to my metaphor, every airplane that flies through the air flies through a environment. There's no vacuum that uh, you can fly through. You wouldn't fly, you know? Mm. Let's say your airplane on its own, the engine itself could fly at 100 miles an hour if there was no wind. But of course, there always is wind. Either there's a headwind or a tailwind. Mm -hmm. Most people live their financial life pushing, pushing, pushing into a massive headwind coming right at them. What's the headwind? Mortgages, credit cards, student loans, uh, bank loans, auto loans. The auto loans are the scourge of the middle class. You add up all those different debts, and that's the 36 cents on the dollar that I mentioned earlier. It's not the volume of interest. Uh, it's not the rate of interest, I should say. It's not the rate of interest. You could have a low interest credit card, low interest student loan low interest mortgage, but it's the volume that can wipe you out. If you just have a, a massive tonnage of air coming right at your airplane, doesn't matter how hard your little airplane flies, you're going to be flying in the wrong direction because that headwind is pushing you uh, away from your goal, not towards it. So flip-flop that. The only way you can move toward your goal is to land your plane and wait and be patient for the winds to change. And winds always change. So wait for that tailwind to lift you off. Now your airplane is flying with the tailwind. So your 100 miles an hour might get doubled depending on the tailwind. And now you're going to be making it to your goal in record time. That's the power of banking. When you control banking, when you are your own banker, when you bank on yourself, as we talk about, uh, and that's a trademark phrase by Pamela Yellen. She wrote the book on this. Uh, so I'd encourage folks to go check out that book. But the strategy is letting your banking system help you rather than it be what's there to trip you up. So that's what it means to become your own source of financing. Yeah, and that, yeah, definitely don't hear that at all. Um, you know, because a lot of times, like I said, it's, it's always the opposite there. And it's uh, very scary, as again, you mentioned, alluded to in the beginning where, you know, we may double double taxes. We don't know where the, the, the financial environment is going to be. And, and if you're not set up in a position where you're able to handle this or even to take on advantages or opportunities that pop up, he definitely is going to be in the wrong the wrong side of uh of your financial history so i really appreciate you sharing that and i know we can go super deep into that specific topic and again i'm uh, definitely going to reach out to the guests i mean the audience and and try to get you back onto the show again to kind of talk about a little bit more in detail about those i understand that you have a a podcast as well uh, called uh not your average financial podcast can you kind of share what that's about and um, when it when it's available when people can listen to it and and stuff they can learn from it yeah sure yeah again i think there are a few things in your financial life that make all the difference it's not whether you bought a latte this morning sorry to any money articles that you may have read it's not even how many one dollar bills you can sock away into your 401k it won't make that big a difference uh, what really matters is the banking function and what you can do to bring that back in-house. It's the small hinge that I believe swings the big door. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what your mutual funds made last quarter. I don't care. 
What really matters is who's controlling the environment where your money lives. If you want to kind of take all that down the ladder some, guys, you know, that's a lot of ethereal, esoteric concept and metaphor and airplanes. And what was this guy talking about? If you want to bring it down the ladder some to see how we actually implement the banking strategies for our clients, check out our podcast. It's a Not Your Average Financial Podcast. We get into the raw numbers, spreadsheets. We get into particular financial vehicles that let you become your own banker without necessarily having to set up an FDIC insured bank with you know, $10 million <laughs> charters and waiting a decade to open up the bank and all that. You can do this as an individual or a family without a lot of cash. You can do it. You can do it. So check us out, notyouraveragefinancialpodcast.com. Uh, we drop them every Friday. We've got over 150 episodes. Happy to talk and in engage you guys there. Awesome. Yeah, really. We'll definitely make sure to have that in the link as well, along with your contact information. Uh, I know we've talked a little bit of pre-show, but I just wanted to kind of share that with the audiences. Kind of what's a typical work day for you? And do you have any special morning routines? Yeah, we've, um, I've, I've always been a morning person and I love the full focus planner by Michael Hyatt. Got it right here, right on it every single day. Awesome. Uh, it's That's where great. I put my goals, put my thoughts, you know, put my uh, big three objectives for the day. And if I don't get that done, then my life, my day just doesn't feel quite right. So <laughs> morning routine. Uh, it also includes some, uh, some cycling, indoor cycling, some other workout routines that I do. And it's always evolving, you know, always try to get your brain and your heart and your, and your um, gut all working together in the same way. So doing a little bit of intermittent fasting right now, which has been a lot of fun. So awesome. Keeping yeah. it real. Yeah, it's awesome. And as far as kind of working with your team, is there any like tools or resources that you guys use to make you guys uh, more productive? Hmm. Well, we just started all of our financial associates that work in our firm. Uh, we just started something brand new. We started a membership site, which uh, has been a lot of fun and very productive way for us to stay in touch. It's like, it's like Facebook only yours. It's like Slack only better. Wow. Uh, it's a way for us to put all of our resources, a library of content and ideas, questions, back and forth, making all of us better financial professionals for our clients. Uh, so we just started using that new membership site. And actually, so so as I don't know when this episode will air, but as of uh, 1st of January, we're making another membership site for all of our podcast audience because I want to get deep into uh, engagement with folks. I don't just want to drop episodes all over the place. I want to like engage the audience. And so we're making that membership site also available through uh, our podcast. So if you guys want to check that out, just That's again, awesome. go to not your average financial podcast.com. Awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that a lot. And I always ask um, uh, my uh, guests this uh, question is always something that I, I always think about um, as I go through and um, think about family and life and everything is uh, gratitude. So what can you say that you're most grateful for? Well, I, I only have a few things that I want to put on my tombstone besides pepperoni, of course, Dwayne. <laughs> um, but, uh, but the one thing I want to have on there is the words um, cherish the gift and share the gift. So cherish the gift, share the gift. And throughout life, I think if we can cherish the gift, and gift is a very vague term, which we probably don't have time to get into right now, but uh, it's everything that you have been given, that I have been given, to moment by moment understand that is a gift, to realize that it's not something that I just pulled off the tree, but it's something that I can enjoy for this temporary time and then need to hand over to my daughter someday and to my wife and to the people I care about the most. So the more you can feel that gift, maybe it's every morning through prayer. Maybe it's through, you know, your conversation with someone. My, my family, we sit around the table every night and talk about what we're grateful for. And it's just a great way to lower the stress, the blood pressure, and uh, pass along that gift to those you love. Awesome. Yeah, and it's definitely a good timely message as we're heading a couple days um, before Christmas. And depending on when this air, probably in the next couple of weeks, uh, you know, like I said, it's always, always the best time to be given gratitude. Uh, for, you know, just having, just having life. So, uh, Mark, I really appreciate it. And the last thing is, uh, how do we get in touch with you? We have, make sure to have the link for your podcast. Understand you may have a website book or something like that. You'd like to talk about as well. Yeah. Um, guys, uh, L G dot subscribe me now.com is uh, the best website. If you want to check out one place where you can say hello and get on my calendar, say hello, meet me, answer questions from this episode today. L G dot subscribe me now.com gets you right there awesome mark it was a pleasure to speak with you again uh 
great timely information. I know, like I said, there's so much stuff we can get deeper into and definitely would love to have you back again to talk about those strategies. I suggest everyone to go check out your podcast so they can be able to learn more about the banking system and then how you can structure it for yourself and your family. Mark, it was a pleasure having you again and look forward to having you again on the show again soon. Take care. Let's do it. Thanks, Dwayne. Right. Take care, my friend. Hey there, this is Dwayne Clark, your host of the Wealth Through Real Estate Investing Show. I want to thank you again for tuning in and hope you're enjoying this valuable content. While I got you for a quick minute, I wanted to send you an invitation to join our growing investor community. It's called the Passive Investors Club. It's a group of like-minded individuals like you who are seeking financial freedom and to build true wealth through passive investing in commercial real estate. We take a totally different approach to investing that is opposite, that is pushed by the financial advisors and what we see in the mainstream media. We like to invest in real assets that we can touch and understand and that are not subject to the wild swings of the financial markets. We don't want to be part of the herd who pursues the traditional route, leaving our financial future to Wall Street. So if you're interested in joining our group and to share in resources and opportunities, then go to PassiveInvestorsClub.com forward slash join. Joining the club is completely free and there's no obligation. And all our members receive our free Passive Investors course along with tons of resources and content. So again, PassiveInvestorsClub.com forward slash join.